Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Kimberly Day is training us on how to get more clients and scale our income by writing a book. Kimberly is the award-winning author of Write and Grow Rich, how to use a book to supersize your brand, your business, and your bank account. She helps entrepreneurs publish a book so that they can attract clients, speaking engagements, referral partners, and media coverage. Audience, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. And in the course of Kim's presentation, I will pose your questions to her. Uh, the video recording of Kim's uh, talk will be published before noon tomorrow, and you'll be sent a link uh, to the YouTube video. Kim, are you ready to rock the stage? I am ready. Then take it away. She's all yours. Awesome. And I can't see the chat, so Roger, you're going to be managing that for me, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. And um, I wanted to just thank you for having me, and I'm so excited to be here tonight and presenting this um, uh, topic matter to you. And I want to, um, I have a couple of goals for, for me for this presentation. And the first one is, um, of course, if you stay right to the end, I've got a really great um, gift for you. In fact, it's my 10-step uh, guide to planning and writing your very own business building book. And it's so much more than a guide. It's actually 20 pages of worksheets, exercises, um, planners, checklists. So everything that you could actually need to start the process of getting your very own book um, brought to life uh, this year in 2020. So please make sure you stay to the end because I'm gonna share with you how you can access that guide um, at the end of the presentation. And before I get started, I want to take just a second as well to congratulate all of you for being here. You know, it's uh, eight o'clock at night on a Tuesday. You could be doing so many other things. You could be spending time with your family. You could be out taking a walk. You could be sitting on the couch, binge watching Netflix. You could be doing so many things, but you took the time to invest in yourself and your business. And of course, 80% of success is just showing up. So take a second to congratulate yourself, give yourself a pat on the back, and thank you so much for being here. And I promise to over deliver and give you a bunch of great value tonight. So if anyone has ever been in a presentation with me, you'll know that I have two rules. So the first rule is I want you to not believe a word I say. Now, you might be thinking that's a little bit weird because you're supposed to be the book writing expert. But what I mean by that is I can only come from my perspective. So I'm going to share with you uh, some great strategies tonight about how I was able to, in less than 12 months, double my income using the exact same strategies that I now teach my clients. And so I'm excited about these strategies, but I want you to just listen with an open mind. Take what you want out of the presentation if you feel there's value and implement it into your business and leave by what you don't want. Which brings me to rule number two. So who would like to um, be able to learn faster and retain more information in their life? I know that when I'm going to, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an avid, like a, a massive note taker. I'm constantly always taking notes and jotting down information. Well, the key to learning faster and, have, and retaining more information is actually a really easy thing. It's participation. So I'm going to be asking you to raise your hand. I can't see all of you. I can only see a small portion of you. So I'm hoping the rest of you are there. I know a lot of people have their cameras turned off, but if you um, actually want to learn better and learn faster, you might want to turn off all your other notifications. Take this, you've, you've already uh, prepared for the time. So spend the time, invest it in yourself, stay focused, turn off all the other, other distractions, take a bunch of notes and participate. And I promise um, you'll learn better and faster. So let me just, before I dive right into the content, if it's okay with you, is it okay with you if I share just a little bit about my background and, and why I'm here today? Okay, so I've done a lot of things right in my business. Um, a, a little bit about me. I actually wrote and published my first book back 
in 2017, um, I wrote and published the Financial Fitness Playbook. Uh, for over 13 years, I was a financial advisor. And if you can rewind back to the time where we could all go to live networking events, you might remember that there was almost always a half a dozen financial advisors in the room, along with bookkeepers and accountants, mortgage brokers, realtors. Um, it's a, especially in the financial services sector, it was a very saturated market. So I was always looking for ways to be able to stand out from the crowd. And after writing that book, I literally, in 12 months, I mentioned it earlier, doubled my income. Um, I added 13 multifamily uh, real estate properties to my portfolio using none of my own money. And all of this was the power of how clients came out of the woodwork and were attracted to me because of the power of the book. So that was really exciting. And um, I, lo I, I love sharing that now with other people. But it wasn't always this way. I did a lot of things wrong. Uh, for years, I struggled in private practice. I was constantly struggling for lead generation. I was, again, in a saturated and skeptical market. The sales cycle for finance is slow uh, because a lot of people don't want to disclose their, their struggles financially. So it was always that big struggle of where is my next client coming from? And in fact, for years, my income looked a little bit like this. I don't know if anyone can relate. You might not want to raise your hand for this one. If you're brave enough, go for it. But as an entrepreneur, um, I call this the income roller coaster. So often I would have great months and then I would have these down months. And when I was in the down months, it felt more like this. I was like, oh my God, like where is my next mortgage payment coming from? And even talking about it today sometimes brings back that same anxiety. And I don't know if you can relate, but to that roller coaster of where is that next client going to come from because that's possibly your next paycheck or your next mortgage payment or you know something that you need to to help your kids out with so i struggled for years doing this and i was like i just can't do this anymore i needed to figure out a better way and have you ever noticed that when you're struggling with something or you're looking for answers sometimes the universe can just kind of slide right in there and and make something happen to kind of force you to take some action? Well, that's what happened to me. I call it my TSM turning point of the game. And in 2015, um, I, at 43 years old, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And so my big turning point, which was cancer, doesn't necessarily need to be what your big turning point is, but maybe you can think of a time in your past where you either lost a job or you had a relationship that was ending or you had a health crisis possibly like myself or you know a marriage ended or somebody in your family passed away those big moments in time where you start to reflect back about like what am I doing with my life you know and my mom had actually passed away at 48 from cancer so this was doubly powerful for me where I'm like sitting there like with my head in my hands thinking to myself like if I pass away from this, what will my life have amounted to? What are people gonna say that I left behind? And it was one of those moments where I was like, what I felt like was actually just a big, huge loser. And I was like, I can't believe I've been sitting on the sidelines of the game of life, AKA why I call it my turning point, my TSN turning point of the game. Because I made a decision in that moment that if I made it through this, that no more, no more was I going to sit on the sidelines and play small. I was getting in the game and I was going after my goals. I knew I had great greatness inside of me. I just wasn't taking action and I wasn't doing the things I knew I needed to do. And I knew it came from inside. So I started a journey into personal development and I discovered the book writing process. And of course, you know, you've heard the rest of the story. So I discovered all of these things the hard way, 13 years struggling in financial services. It took me getting cancer. Um, it took all of these struggles and challenges, two more years of personal growth and development before I found the book strategy. And then bingo, in less than 12 months, everything, everything moved away. So the bonus is, is that because I went through all those struggles and figured out the shortcut, now you get to figure out the easy way. So what did the hard way kind of look like for me? Well, it was often networking. And not unlike what we're doing today, and I'm not saying networking is bad, I still network a lot. I think it's amazing. But with networking, you meet, you know, say five, 10 people in a room, you go on 10 one-to-one -one meetings, and then you're doing endless follow-up. 
because you're not necessarily in a room where your perfect target market is hanging out. You're just in a room where all sorts of um, businesses are hanging out. But after doing that for 13 years and then figuring how to actually hone right in on your perfect target market client and then how to get them chasing you instead of you chasing them, um, after 13 years of struggling, everything turned around. And I realized that it can be, actually be fast, it can be easy, and it can be super profitable. And of course, you know what we're about to talk about today. So here's the easy way. And this is how I found the fast and easy and most profitable way to market yourself and get an unlimited stream of clients coming into your business without ever having to chase them. And it's, of course, using the power of a book. However, what I'm going to talk to you about today is, uh, is a, even a, in more depth than just the book writing. I'm going to share with you three secrets. And the secret number one is that it's actually not even really about a book. And we'll go over what that, what it really is about. I'm going to share with you how it's the fastest, easiest, and most profitable asset that you'll ever create for your business. And I'm going to share with you how success leaves clues and how uh, possibly um, you might be able to follow some of those clues yourself to the success you might be looking for in your business. So the first secret, this is the first secret that it's not really about a book at all. It's all about your marketing. And what a book is, is really just a marketing brochure on steroids, right? This isn't about you writing a book so you can sell a whole million $10 copies of a book or go on book tours or go on book signings. It's actually about using the book to help you overcome the marketing challenges that you face every day in your business. So this is really about turning your marketing into almost a magical lead generation tool using this specific tactic. So I talked about some marketing challenges. So what are the marketing challenges that you face every day in your business? Well, I'm going to talk to you about five of them that most of the people that I work with talk about and how um, these marketing challenges need to be overcome in this new economy for you to be able to have really great success with your marketing. So the first marketing must have that you need to have in this new economy is attraction. So forget chasing them. That is so old. You need to make them come to you. And the fact is, is that almost everything you've learned about sales and marketing should be forgotten. Chasing customers isn't the way to get rich today. You need to use a way more powerful tool. And that tool is called attraction. So manipulation is out, cold calling is out. It's not only, I feel like it's ridiculous and I know people that still do it, but even the way we're taught about prospecting is ridiculous. We're told that selling is a numbers game. The idea if you just throw enough mud at the wall, some of it is bound to stick. But I believe that instead of chasing prospects, if you get them coming to you, if you get them to put up their hand and tell you, I'm already interested in what you're trying to sell, then you, your prospecting becomes easy because now when you're having enrollment conversations, kind of like Neijing was talking about, now you're talking to the right person, the person who is your perfect client. And that secret weapon that you need to have instead of chasing clients is called attraction. So by writing a book, you become a magnet to tons of prospects who are predispositioned to buy exactly what it is that you're selling and the book makes them come directly to you. Nothing is going to draw your customers and prospects to you and fill your pipeline faster and with more power than a book. Hey, Kim, did you yeah. just nudge your mic? Is that better? Yes, it is. Okay, sorry, I have some notes so that I don't get off track. <laughs> so I, I must have put it over my mic, I apologize. Um, so instead of, uh, so where were we at? Yes. Um, Chasing prospects, old school. Attracting prospects, that's your new way of marketing today. So, and doesn't that sound better? Like, wouldn't, it, wouldn't you just love to not have to do all the follow-up and all the chasing? Wouldn't it be awesome if clients just started coming to you? So, let's talk about the number two thing that I think all of your marketing needs to have. And that's differentiation. So, in today's current business climate, you need to find a way to differentiate yourself from everyone else in your industry who is doing exactly the same thing you do or selling exactly the same thing you sell. And it's not just about knowing that you're different, but it's making your prospective client know that you're different because perception is reality. 
right? So if you send a free book to a prospect or show up at a sales call with your published book, you're instantly making your competition practically irrelevant because a book has that power. When I was a financial advisor, there was not a single other financial advisor in any of the networking events that I ever went to that was a published author. And I mean, maybe you can think of some in your mind. How many financial advisors do you know that are published authors? There's a couple of financial professionals in this room. Think about your own industry and how many people that you know that are authors. And how many times have you gone to your optician's office or talk to your HVAC professional? These are some of the types of clients that I'm helping right now that you'd never think would have a book, but they will stand out and blow their competition away. So um, your prospects don't know people that have books either. Um, it's becoming a little bit more known in the entrepreneurial landscape. That is very true. But the people that we serve still have that wow factor where books are concerned. And if you have the book, you stand out. And it's a very powerful way to say to the market that you're different. So the third thing you want your marketing to have is visibility. And not just that you're getting in front of more people, but that you're getting in front of more of the right people. So are you aware that every newspaper, and although newspapers are kind of you know, going down by the wayside, but still, people still love to have that tactical read. I don't know about you, but I still buy book books. I'm not like an e-reader person. I like to hold a book in my hand. I still like to write notes. That is, that is my preference. I don't think books are ever going out of style. Doesn't mean that there's not multiple ways of publishing, and, we, and I talk about that later. But every magazine, newspaper, radio show, television progress, uh, program, um, uh, podcast starts every day. Um, it, it's, um, who is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, we just, um, sorry, I'm like losing people's names while I'm, while I'm on here. But um, people have content that they need to fill. There's time and space that they need to fill with stories and articles and interviews. And where do you think all of that content comes from? It comes from, in large part, from experts. And the best way to position yourself as an expert is as a published author. And in our society, those who have written books are perceived to be experts. And there's a huge demand for them to share their expertise. So if you want to keep your name in front of your target market, and if you publish a book, then you significantly multiply your business. You, you need to get your message in front, in front of more people. And you, as the author, typically, if you're being compared with somebody else to get that speaking position or that interview position, somebody with a book typically jumps to the front of the line. They'll pick the published author um, ahead of the one that is not published. Um, and I know this from my media and PR coach. She used to be on radio. So they were constantly being bombarded with uh, requests to get on the show. And if she had a choice between a, an author and a not author, they picked the author every time. So that leads into the fourth piece of marketing that you need to have, which is the authority, which we just, I just talked about, the credibility and the authority. Because of course, um, in today's economy, consumers are skeptical. We can get online and we can research everything. Practically before somebody has even come to do business with you, they've already uh, Googled you or searched you um, and they've looked you up and people are mistrusting of marketers and they're bombarded with marketing messages on a daily basis. And anything that you can do to raise your credibility will almost certainly help you attract more prospects. Because in our society, authors are viewed as more credible. And it, and I mean, take my story for an example. I had been a financial advisor for 13 years. So it's not like I was any more smart, smarter. I might just sound dumber just even saying that. But it's not like three months after I wrote my book, I was smarter than I was three months before. I just got the perception there because now I've packaged it up into a, um, a format that people perceive as instant credibility. So when someone sees you on a book, they, it gives you credibility faster than anything. So how does this translate back to marketing? Well, as an author, when you walk in the room, you're positioned as an authority. And because you're perceived as an authority by your prospects, you're far more likely to close the sale. And typically that closing time is actually shortened as well. So imagine just for a minute, what would happen to your business if you could get prospects to buy from you faster, if that's all it did and shorten up your sales cycle. 
because that's one of the things that positioning yourself with credibility and authority. We talked about it in the first, uh, t the, in the marketing tip this morning. So the whole, whole know, like, and trust. And if you're, if you, people get to know you, like you, and trust you faster, you have a better opportunity to close the sale. So um, that brings us to the last marketing piece that your marketing material needs to have, and that's longevity. So this is your pun intended. Your marketing needs to have shelf life. And I don't know about you, but I have never thrown out a book. Worst case scenario, I'm donating it to someone, giving it to the library, I'm handing it off to somebody else to read. But shelf life is another obstacle your marketing needs to overcome to survive in today's market marketplace. It's expensive. I can think of dozens of realtors that I know where, you know, the, the postcard marketing that they send in the mail or the brochure or the glossy ad or the business card, it lands right in the garbage along with all of the other junk mail or it lands even doesn't even sometimes get to the garbage in your own house. It lands in that little recycling bin right beside the, right beside the mailbox in my building. That's where all my stuff goes. So flyers, direct mail, um, radio and TV are short lived. Um, magazines are, 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 have about a 30 day um, shelf life. So at the end of the day, um, you can use a book to buy back your shelf life. And one of the reasons that a book is such a great advertising tool is it keeps you, your company and your message in front of your prospects for not only um, hours, but days, weeks, months, and even years. And so sometimes it takes somebody that long to decide or feel that they need your services. And the perceived value of a book is enormous and people don't throw out books. So that really, really, really buys you shelf life. So that covers secret number one, which is all of the marketing challenges that a book overcomes. So I can't think of anything better than that, than a book to do this for you, to have your prospects coming to you, you stop the chase and start attracting, help you stand out from the crowd, differentiate you from your competition, help you be seen by more of your prospects, increase your vis visibility, position yourself as a trusted expert and authority in front of your prospects and your clients, and create longevity or shelf life for your marketing materials. So that brings us to secret number two. And secret number two is leverage. So I talked about this being the fastest, the easiest, and the most profitable asset that you could ever have for your business. Now, when I say this is the fastest and easiest tool you could ever create for your business, does that make anybody feel a little bit like, oh no, like this feels like it would take forever and I, it would be way too hard and I have no idea how to do any of this. Because that's kind of what I first thought when I thought about writing a book. I thought, holy crap, how am I gonna get all of this organized? Well, how am I gonna, a bunch of people talked about, how am I gonna organize the content so that um, I can put it all together and people don't know where to start and it's overwhelming, but what, um, doing this does is it creates leverage in, in, um, with respect to, to your time. So one of the best things that it does is it stops you from having to do as many one-to-one -one presentation and now gets you into the area where you're doing your presentation from to one to many. So not only can you get your book out into the hands of many, many people and your book tells the story for you, but by the time that they come to you, your, again, your, um, your enrollment conversation is much shorter because they're already predispositioned to, predispositioned to buy from you. Furthermore, you can do things like this. I think there's 18 people on this presentation right now. So instead of me getting on 18 calls and doing 18 one hour um, talks with people, I can do one talk for one hour to 18 people. So I've leveraged my time a little bit more effectively. And speaking is also one of the most effective ways um, to grow your business. So you, let, you pair that with your book and use it to create more speaking opportunities. And now all of a sudden you're even leveraging your, um, your time more. And not only that, but you're creating content once and then you're using it over and over and over and over again. So uh, your book content can be repurposed. It can be repurposed into... Each of your chapters can become a blog post. You can break those down even further to smaller social media snippets. You can use them to um, fuel the content for uh, videos, for emails, for podcasts, um, for radio, for interviews, for, um, for presentations like this. And if you've ever done presentations like this um, in any other type of networking opportunity, likely you have a lot of the content already ready in your computer. 
You just need to learn how to package it together in a, such a way that it positions you as that authority that you want to be. Kim, uh, let me interrupt you. Uh, mm -hmm. We have 25 people on the call and uh, Delara has asked a question. Sure. I would like to know if Kimberly knows ghost writers who can help with writing this type of book, if she can share a source to find them. Thanks again. Um, I do know ghost writers and I believe uh, there was somebody on the call today that hopped on, James, I think it was, that talked about um, being a freelance writer. So there, the, uh, ghost writers are, are really easy to find, but I'll, um, I'll challenge you that uh, there's, it's probably easier than you think to write it yourself, if, especially if you're already working and you're already an expert in your space. But um, that's a great question. And yes, it, it can be, um, you can be paired up with ghostwriting for sure. So you're inviting Delara to contact you? Yeah, she can contact me. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. For Thank sure. you. No, no further questions. Thanks. So the big objections that I hear from most people, in case anybody's kind of feeling like this right now, the, the I'm not credible. Um, people, I, I see it over and over again. They feel like, oh, I've only been doing my business for a year, so who am I to write the book? Well, it's kind of the which came first, the chicken or the egg. Do you become credible before you write the book or does the book make you credible? So think about that. You don't have to have a PhD to write a book. You write the book. That's all the credibility that you need. The next one is people tell me they don't have time. I wrote my last book in 10 days. Actually, not just wrote it. Wrote it, edited it, published it, uh, had printed copies in my hand in 10 days, right before my book launch. So I'm telling you, if I can do it, you can do it. Now, my first one took three months. So I'm not telling you you necessarily can write your first one in 10, in 10 days. I've had a little bit of practice, but I guarantee you it can be done within 30 to 90 days um, if you can follow a system, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, I heard a couple of people saying, I'm not sure what to write about. Well, if you're a business owner, what you're mainly writing about is either the system that you, or the process that you already take a client through, your sales process, or you're just writing about your prospect's biggest problems and how your product or service solves those problems and gets them their desired transformational results faster than they could get them on their own. So it's a tool to lead them down the path to your product or service offering. So remember earlier when I talked about it, it's not about selling books and signing, going on book tours. It's about using that $10 book to sell a $1,000 or a $2,000 or a $5,000 program or service that you have on your back end. It's that lead generator. It's that freebie or that lead magnet that gets somebody into your sales funnel so you can convert them to your product or service offering. I can't afford it. Well, it does cost some money to publish. I can show you a lot of free options a lot of low budget options, a lot of higher budget options. But what I know is that it makes money for you. So if you've got a product or service offering, it's fairly easy to make that publishing cost back. Somebody talked about sponsorship. The, I wanna say the, the manure guy in Japan, um, uh, Fumi, right? Um, I actually talked to talk in my program about how to joint venture and collaborate with people in your industry or people that are um, in similar um, but non-competing industries that you would normally collaborate with. So as an example, in financial services, I had sponsors in the back of my book that um, were mortgage brokers, realtors. Um, um, I had a will and estate uh, lawyer because I would talk about in, in my finance career about writing wills. So I had people that wanted to be in front of my clients partner with me on the book to get the marketing exposure that my book would get me. So um, a marketing person, as an example, I write a book. So for, for, for my book, I'm talking to podcasters and video marketers and email marketers and website designers, because these are all people that my authors will likely need the services of. So you, I show people exactly how you can get all of these other um, collaborative uh, partners to pay for all of your printing costs. So that's pretty awesome. Um, Kim, two questions. You bet. Uh, I, Himant, uh, first, I believe I can write at least two books at the moment. However, other priorities won the race. How do I overcome the conflicting priorities that continue to be a big hurdle even now for me? 
Um, I guess that kind of falls into like procrastinating and trying to decide, um, you know, how to shift your priorities at the end of the day. Um, you know, if you keep doing what you've always done, you, you're going to keep getting the results that you, that you always get. So if you can consider how much you could multiply your business with the power of a book and you could follow a system to get it done quickly and efficiently, um, then, you know, I would suggest, uh, most of the time, all of the big obstacles or all of the big projects that I've ever completed all started with making a decision to invest in me and myself and invest some time. So we make time for the things that are most important to us. So, you know, you, that, that comes with decision making. And then the universe moves and conspires to help you get it done. It's how I, how it always seems to happen, happen to me. A question from Chris. How should a subject matter expert find the right fit and find the right publisher to get some nice readership? Also, is there any good way to go the self-publishing route? Absolutely. And so what I teach in my program is the self-publishing route. So technically I'm the publisher, but I'm what um, would be referred to in the industry as an indie publisher or an independent publisher. So I'm not like your, um, your big hay house publisher who's going to give you $50,000 to go write your book. What I'm doing is I'm helping you through the self-publishing um, journey so that you don't have to trip over all the obstacles I had to when I was first doing it. I walk you right through the process and then you get, are handed over the rights. So no, I take no um, royalties, no anything. All the profit becomes yours. So that's kind of, um, that's kind of the thing. There are some um, nuances and, and tricks to self-publishing to make yourself not look self-published. And those are um, some critical things I go, go through and which actually brings me to secret number three, which is the whole thing about success leaving clues, right? Can you and, handle another question? Yeah, for sure. Before I finish writing a book, are there any tools and techniques I could use when I am 20 or 30% down the way to completion? Just make sure the book I am writing will have a good readership and sales, question mark. Um, so good readership and sales. So, um, yes. So if you write the right book, it's critical to write the right book. I know that sounds a little bit cliche, but, and it comes with understanding who your target market is, the message you're trying to convey to them. What's the goal and the purpose of your book. And I go through all of this and, um, and you have a clear understanding of exactly how you're going to be marketing your book before you've even written a single word. All of the planning phase is the most important. So we all know that following a system or following a roadmap um, usually is the easiest way to go, right? Like it's not like you could probably go to Google right now and Google, how do I write a book? And you could probably find a ton of information and I'm guarantee you, you are every single one of you are smart enough to do it all on your own. But what I know and what I always do is I like to accelerate and move myself forward faster. So typically when I'm looking at doing something that feels a little bit um, overwhelming to me or causes me a little bit of like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing and I just don't have the time. If somebody's having t a time struggle, you don't want to go and have to figure it out on your own. So what you do is you follow somebody who's already gone before you. And there's not just me. So by, any, by all means, there's lots of people out there that are um, doing this kind of work right now. But I'll tell you a little bit about my system and then, you know, you can, you can decide whether that's something that um, it makes, makes some sense to you to get something done faster. So I have a five-step um, signature system that I walk my, all of my authors through. I call it my 5P system. So the first step is the planning phase. So this is the phase where I just talked about where we're going to um, really break down and learn how to clearly identify not only your best, but your highest paying ideal target client. You're going to learn why the purpose of your book is not probably not what you think about it. The 12 parts that every book needs to have to be not perceived as self-published. And you're going to understand the fundamental components that every book needs before you even start writing. This is critical. This is the planning phase and every great project ha starts with a plan. So this is the one where we get right down into the nitty gritty I help you um, make sure you know exactly who your message is before all the fun begins. Because then the next phase in the promote phase, this is where we um, figure out a 
like a juicy title and subtitle that will actually instantly grab the attention of that perfect client that you've now figured out in step one so that your book pops right off the page. That title pops right off the page at them. You create your eye-catching cover. You get your author website up and running. If you already have a website, you make sure your uh, promotion, your book promotion page is up and running. You get your social media content already. You learn why you don't sell books. Your books sell you and your products and services. We talked a little bit about that. And I teach you right away how to start making, uh, start making, start marketing yourself and your book before you've even written a single word, which is critical because we want this to start creating buzz. You're actually promoting yourself as an expert before you've even written your book. I know for eight months before I even had my book written, um, I was positioning myself as the author of the upcoming book, Write and Grow Rich, where I show entrepreneurs how to supersize their brand, their business, and their bank account. I didn't have the book written yet, but I can't tell you how many people di didn't, even re didn't even hear the word upcoming book. They just assumed I was already the author of that book. They'd be like, oh, where can I buy your book? I'm like, oh, it's upcoming. Like, and even my first book, there's some tricks as well. Um, I had my foreword written by a New York Times bestselling author. I can't tell you how many times people are like, oh my God, Kim, you're a New York Times bestselling author. That's amazing. And it wasn't that I was a New York Times bestselling author, but it said forward by New York Times bestselling author. But people just glance over stuff. And if they are absorbing that and thinking I'm a New York Times bestselling author, who am I to correct them? It positioned me with more authority already. So there's little tricks and tips and tricks that I can talk about with respect to your cover that actually help you get more attention and position yourself with more authority. Um, and then of course, um, we're talking about, um, we still have to do the produce phase. So we still have to lay the groundwork. So I had lots of comments on that, on how do I position my content? How do I lay that all out? And we do this um, right, from, right from the start here. We figure out how to name your chapters, how to identify resources and bonuses you're gonna give, how to quickly choose chapter titles and subtitles that help you eliminate writer's block. So when you actually do start the writing process or gathering your content, you're not getting stuck. I talk about things like how many pages do your, does your book need to be so that you're credible? And why this is important. I talk about four different ways to write your book. And which one's the best one for you? So somebody talked about ghostwriting, but did you know you if you if you're a better speaker and you've ever done video work, you any, have any audio tracks, you can take all of that, transcribe it, and turn that into your book. Or you can use a tool on your phone. You can use a voice memo. Or now every Word document, um, like my Microsoft Word, has a dictate button. You can push the dictate button and talk your book to life. I can talk really fast. In case you hadn't heard. You know how fast I can whip off a book if I just talked it, talked it to life? So if you're better at talking, I'll show you how to talk your book to life. And it happens fast. So then we go to the publish phase. This is like the most boring part. This is uploading to Amazon, creating an account, all that stuff you need to know. But we do talk about a few important things in this section, like editing and formatting. So we've got an, um, an editor, um, James, right? We've got an editor and a freelance writer here. So I talk about editing and the importance of proofreading so that you, so you have a book that has professional results how to choose a publisher if you did want to use um, a, a bigger publisher, how to choose a platform to sell and distribute your books, how to finalize and finish all of your chapters, how to decide whether you want to use ebook, print book, PDF, paperback, hardback, audiobook, all of the above, which method is right for you or maybe all of the above methods. We go through all of that. Kim, and then the most couple fun of questions. You bet. For the first time author, how long would it take to write a 150 to two page book? And how many hours per week is the norm? Um, I, I, I have not had anybody not be able to complete within 90 days. And I'm talking 90 days is not just the writing. That's, the, um, that's from start to finish, the planning, promoting, publishing, everything, the whole kit and caboodle, book, book in hand. So 90, 90 days, how many hours per day? Um, I'd say a couple hours a week you could get it done. Okay. And for those of us who are perfectionists, how do you, how can we overcome that in order just to do it? At least do it to the first draft. You know, I have a motto, it's called done is better than perfect. So you can always edit a bad page, but you can't edit a blank page. So you need to just get started. You need to plant your flag, make a decision, do it and let go, surrender. 
three quarters of the people, you know what my book coach told me? He goes, Kim, nobody's going to read your book anyways. And it's true. I actually have three, three quarters of the books on my shelf. I've, you know, you start one or two chapters and then I'm like, squirrel, oh, look at this book. And I, I've got another book and I haven't even read the whole other, the whole other one. How many of you got books on your shelf that you haven't read? People don't read your book. Your book is a tool to get them to perceive you as an expert and realize they can't do it on their own. And they want and need to hire you, hire you, hire you for your services. That's what your, the power of what your book does for you. So you hire a proofreader, you hire a copywriter or a copywriter, you hire an editor and you just, you have to, you just have to make a decision to get it done. And your second one will be better. I remember uh, people that talk about doing video work and all that kind of stuff, that if you don't cringe at your first video that you've ever done of yourself, then you waited too long to start. You just need to get started. Done is always better than perfect, in my opinion. I hope that helps. <laughs> so uh, the most fun part though of this is the profit section. So discovering how to make money with your book without ever selling a single book, because it's not about selling books. Um, I want you to learn some simple strategies to double or even triple your income, just like I did. And like lots of the people that I've helped have done. And I can, I'll show you 10 different ways that you can use your book to generate income for your business that are not selling books and how to use your book to automatically start attracting an endless stream of clients. So you can stop that chase and start having people come to you. So you can enjoy a more profitable business. It's all about a more profitable business. Because don't we all deserve to have a more profitable business? We work hard. We should be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. labor. And this will definitely be a strategy that helps you. So I hope that you've enjoyed. I don't know what we're at in, for time, but I you know I'm getting close to the end. So um, uh, we got 15 minutes to go. And a question, uh, how much do all those other, the editor, the designer, the copywriter, the blah, blah, blah. How much do they all cost? That is a great question. The answer is it depends. So it really depends on uh, what type of proofreader or editor you're going to hire. Um, you know, I've had a client whose mom was an English teacher, so, she, so he had his mom do it for free. So I teach in my program the free way, the really if, like easy, low budget way, the medium budget way and, 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 and expensive ways. So there's, there's going to be so many, so many ways that you can skin a cat. I have people that are at this point now, there's so many online tools. Um, Susan, I've talked to with, I've talked at Susan's grand connection meeting about the power of using Canva. Um, I mean, even you don't even, you could even create book covers now using um, online tools that, that generate pretty decent quality. Now you might at the end need to need to tweak it for bleed lines and things for the pr final print version, but quite literally you can do this on a really, really uh, great budget, if not practically free. It's, it's really not as expensive as people think. So, and then I know people that have done, um, hired a $30,000 book coach and at 30,000 bucks, they should be writing the book for you is, is my opinion. But I know, I personally know, three people who did a $30,000 book coaching program. I know that because I know the, the guy who teaches it. So you can spend a lot and you can spend not a lot. So it really just depends on what your budget is and I can help you navigate through all those budgetary options. So I hope you agree that so far that it's been some good value here. And I hope I've provided a whole bunch of um, ideas to get you started thinking about you know, um, all of the things your marketing needs to have. And hopefully that you think that a book might be a possible strategy strategy for you. Of course, I can't cover everything you're going to need to know how to write a book in, in a one hour, um, webinar here. Even if, even if we had all day, it takes more than a little bit more than that. Um, so, but I do have, um, an offer to get you going so that you can actually get on the path. And I talked about that at the, at the beginning. So, um, I'm going to give you a few special offers today. Um, you can put away your wallet. I'm not asking for any kind of money today. So nobody has to get freaked out. I'm not about to sell you something. But what I do want to offer is, um, first of all, a free strategy session. So if some, if you are like, I 100%, I know I want to write a book. I just want to get a call on you. I want to get more details about the program, um, what it would look like to, to work with you. I have several different options. Um, you can hop on a call for that. If you're not even sure if it's right for you, book a call too. I'm happy to walk through that um, through that. Uh, option and idea for you explore that with you and if it's if it's not a good fit no problem I'm like a super no pressure kind of girl 
And if you're somebody who thinks that you might be able to collaborate, like James Nesbitt, you should book a call because I love to collaborate with other professionals in my industry that could help the people that I'm working with. So I love to have, make sure that I've got um, a lot of uh, people on standby to be able to help when questions come up like that. So um, those are kind of the three reasons you might want to book a call. And of course, you have a couple of choices. So you can do nothing, which is what a lot of people do. And, um, and then you know, next year, if you've had a book in your, in your mind, it still won't come to fruition. Imagine though, if 2020, instead of looking back at the year, looking at back at 2020, be the year the world fell apart with coronavirus and the whole world of the pandemic. Imagine if you could say, yeah, and that's the year that I took serious, massive action on my business while we were in hibernation. And I launched into 2021 on the other side of this with flying colors. So that's the, that's the, that's the cost of, of possible cost of waiting, right? So you make this small commitment in yourself today. This is your second option. You book a call and see where it goes. And, um, and Kim, ma'am, can you please comment on the support you give authors facing writer's block? To this day, I do. I've, I'm, and I'm, I'm not lying. I have never had a single writer with writer's block. I have strategies for that. Writer's block. I don't even know where they came up with it. But um, yeah, it's with with the method that I'm using. You will, you will never have writer's block. It just won't happen. No further questions. Mm -hmm. And because Roger's amazing, and he told me I should give lots and lots and lots of value, um, I've got some specials for VBN. So um, for anybody that actually does get on a call and decides to move forward. So again, no pressure. If you don't, if it's not a good fit for you, I'm totally fine with that. But if you did want to move forward and you booked your call because you saw this presentation on, on VBN, either um, live with me right now, or if you're watching this on the YouTube channel um, and you decide to move forward with, um, with, with, with working with me, um, I've got some bonuses. My ultimate author social media marketing kit my ultimate author marketing guide. So it's a six module program. I'm going to share a little bit more about those in a couple of secs here. Um, I've got a podcast uh, person that I work with who is offering a four hour uh, create, launch and sell your very own private audio product. So if you ever thought you might want to do podcasting or uh, you might, or you wanted to turn your book into a podcast, that should be a, a really great little bonus. Um, and I'll do a really deep dive, um, one hour private strategy uh, session with you. And I'll throw in a copy of my book, Write and Grow Rich, for you. So the ultimate author marketing kit. So it's basically your book cover turned into all of these little memes. I've got um, um, a program that I use that converts all of your uh, book cover into uh, digital assets that you can use for posting on social media and starting the marketing of your book again before we've even written a single word because we, we work on the title and the book cover in phase two, which is the promote phase. Bonus two is the ultimate author marketing guide. So it's a six module program on everything you need to know to start leveraging um, the power of your book and your marketing program um, to get that book into the hands of people um, and get your marketing on, on autopilot. Um, this is the uh, third bonus with the private audio product. So my podcast coach is a girlfriend um, and colleague of, of Susan's and I's, um, Michelle Abraham. She's fantastic. And she's got a four hour workshop where she uncovers um, a whole bunch of things and maps out your audio content plan, creates your uh, private audio artwork, um, uploads your first episode and artwork and develops your marketing strategy to get your audio content out there. And think about this if you have one piece of audio, maybe that becomes one chapter of your book. So again, we, we, we use this, this method where you're creating content once and then using it in multiple areas so that you don't have to be always creating content over and over and over again. You're using your same content in multiple ways. So again, we've got the bonuses and all you need to do to, to access those or to get some more information. If all you do is want to have a, a chat about whether this is even right for you, um, I encourage you to hop on a call. And of course, I promised a gift at the end. Um, I've got my 20 page uh, downloadable uh, guide, my 10 step guide to planning and writing a business building book of your own. Checklists, planners, worksheets, everything you need to get started. It's my gift to you. You just need to connect with me on Facebook. The uh, Facebook um, 
my Facebook is right there. If we're not already connected, uh, send me a message through Facebook Messenger and just tell me, I want that guide and I'm happy, happy to get it to you for free. I've just posted your links into the chat. Perfect. So that's me. Six whole minutes left for questions. <laughs> Whew. Are there any final questions before we say good night? It looks like you were so amazing that you have flabbergasted everybody into silence. Oh boy. Kim, uh, what questions do, do audiences normally ask you at this stage of their inquiry into book writing? A lot of the questions were, um, were, were great. Like the questions about how to organize content. And it's, um, it's really quite simple once you um, have clarity on who you're trying to talk to, the problem that you solve for them, the transformational results you get for them, and how your product or service offering uh, gets them to the other side of, of that transformation or bridges the gap. Once you know all of that, all of the other pieces start to fall together. This is where people, people struggle the most though with, with really ironing out that niche that they want to talk to. Is so, part of that niche book titling and subtitling? 100%. It's one of the most important parts. Okay. Absolutely. And then there was a couple of other questions I could uh, quickly touch to, but I think it was um, both Sophie and Linda uh, talked about it. So Sophie talked about a, writing a legacy book for her dad and uh, Linda talked about the fiction book. So um, my area of expertise is more helping people write a business book. So my, um, my book coach and my medium PR coach, they've called them two different things, but the same thing. So I call it either a profit book or a passion book. So a legacy book, as an example, Sophie, for your dad, or a, or a fiction book would be a passion book. So somebody who wants to write a romance novel or a, um, you know, a sci-fi novel or wants to write a legacy or an autobiography book, that's a passion book. A profit book, or as my medium PR coach used to call it, was her, she called it the food book, the one that puts food on your table, um, is the one that's going to generate income for you. So typically when I'm working with entrepreneurs, I tell them, you, you know, you can write your passion book, but don't write it at the expense of your profit book. Put your own oxygen mask on first. You know, write the book that's going to serve your business well while serving and impacting other people and getting your message out to the world. And weave your passion and your story into that book to illustrate the points you're trying to make, to show somebody why they should be listening to you. Because most people's businesses have something to do with their past and how they got into it. So I know that doesn't fully answer. Um, Kim, you've got, a, you've got a wide open question here. It's from Candace. And the yep. question is, how about research? Um, research for topic matter or um, what kind of research do you mean, Candace? Yes, research about a topic matter. So as an example for Candace, because I know she's Melaleuca, um, I would start the question and the research um, session with, with respect to Candace, what are, is the purpose of your book? Is it, is the purpose of your book to get new customers or is it the purpose of your book to recruit a team? Cause those would be two very, very, very different books. So if you want a book on leadership and team building and, and, um, you know, making, um, an income from home, um, you know, uh, you know, a side hustle, that's a totally different book than hi, I want to teach you about wellness products and um, healthy alternatives for your home and cleaning with non-toxic products, two different books. So again, that's where I talk about that in the planning phase, which is the purpose for your book. What's the purpose for your book? Those are critical questions that as soon as you have the answers to those questions, it's like dominoes. Everything else starts to fall into place. Question from Fumi. Do you try to put your book in bookstores these days? I do not. That doesn't mean I don't have clients that do. Um, but again, back to my purpose for my book is not to sell books. My purpose for my book is to sell book coaching programs. So I give my book away because I want my book in the hands of more people. Because my, um, so um, somebody explained it to me um, this way, which I thought made a lot of sense. So selling your book, if you have a program that you're trying to sell or, or, or a service offering um, that you're trying to sell is like stepping over dollars to pick up nickels. 
I don't care about sell, selling a $15 book. It's not my purpose. I want to sell, you know, I want to sell a program. So I want people to see my book. I want people to read my strategy. I want people to go, oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. I like her. I like her style. I want to work with her. That's why I have a book. Question from Sophie. Mm -hmm. I think this could be, I think she's referring to the book with her dad. I yep. think this could be both a passion and profit book as he is an expert in his field. Could also be a business book, drawing customers to the physical business if they are based in the Vancouver area. Thanks and look forward to connecting further. I, I totally agree with that, Sophie. Um, if the purpose is to continue to grow and um, have the family water sports business um, thrive, if the idea is to take it over and continue running it, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a profit book there for sure. That would be interspersed with your dad's passion about the industry and his legacy. Kim, it's at nine o'clock. Uh, so on behalf of Vancouver Business Network, allow me to uh, thank you for sharing this amazing information. Uh, it's just, uh, there's a bottomless pit of marketing ideas and this is a really good one. So congratulations, thanks for giving of your wisdom. And audience, uh, uh, absorb this stuff. It's really good information. Uh, uh, hopefully, these ideas will help you build a better business. The whole challenge, of course, is your implementation. So don't just listen. Actually, do something. Take action. Yeah. In the meantime, I uh, wish you safe home. But normally, but of course, that's relevant, not really relevant in, co in COVID uh, times. Thank you for giving Kim and I of your Tuesday evening. We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday when Aunt Monica will wow you with her wisdom. Good night all, Kim, much appreciated. Thank you very much. It was, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to be here.